Hi, my name is Dimitri McKay from LogLogic. I'm a security architect, and today I'm going to talk to you about vulnerabilities and uh, securing your uh, virtual environment. The benefits of cloud computing really come down to price. Uh, using cloud, whether it be a, a virtual cloud infrastructure as a, as a private cloud, using public clouds such as Microsoft or Amazon, or using uh, somewhere in between some sort of uh, hybrid cloud where you have your um, some of your infrastructure local, and that's usually where the PII lives, the uh, credit card data, the personal data, uh, that sort of thing, being held locally. Uh, where in the cloud, the uh, the other part of that being a, a elasticity in environments. So being able to leverage the cloud for uh, a, a tool which can be grown or shrank as necessary. Price comes down to when we talk about virtual machines and cloud. The back end of cloud is generally virtual environments. And when we talk about virtual, we're talking about things like uh, VMware, for example. And uh, some of the challenges with using the private cloud uh, infrastructure with, uh, with virtual machines is although they simplify things, it's much easier to spin up hardware uh, such as uh, servers, it's, it's much easier to spin up uh, virtual uh, tools, uh, whether it be infrastructure tools, etc., they're very quick to, to, to spin up. However, the challenge that they create, that it, in order to create this simplicity, we're adding another layer. And that other layer is what we call the hypervisor. Now, if you think of what the hypervisor is, on the bottom of the stack is the, the host OS. And that would be uh, really what's communicating with the hardware. And that, that's what we call the hypervisor. On top of that are the guest operating systems. And those would be the actual VMs. And then on those VMs run the software. So the challenge that we have with uh, a security is three things. One, hyperjacking is, is one that uh, is of major concern. The second, VM hopping, which is uh, something I'll talk about in just a moment. And then VM theft. And in order to secure these environments, they're all basically done using traditional security. Now, on the side of the hypervisor, the hypervisor being that middle layer, many of them are built on a Linux kernel. And so they are susceptible to attack. The reason that this is of concern is because there's not a lot of tools that monitor for, uh, for attack on the hypervisor. But once the hypervisor is owned, well then the attacker has the ability to steal uh, virtual machines themselves. They have the ability to use that as a staging ground to attack other virtual machines, those, those guest operating systems. And they can also use that as a way of maintaining persistence. So once a hacker gets access, they want persistence. They want the ability to come back at any time. And that's, that's, that can be that point, the hypervisor. The other two aspects of security, VM hopping and VM theft, uh, also come into play where these flat networks exist. So if you think of the way that virtual environments now are now a flat network, there's a lack of tools such as IDS and IPS. People aren't routing data through these tools. There's no um, SIM correlation. There's no log management tools. There's no intrusion detection uh, pieces. The network has become very flat. Where LogLogic has come into place is uh, traditionally we did uh, enterprise networks, for example, for forensics, for operations, and for uh, security, audit trail. And these generally don't exist in current cloud infrastructures. So although we think of cloud as being a new thing, uh, the same concepts exist between what was traditionally security and what is security. So coming full circle, securing a network from a uh, complex network perspective to uh, a simple network perspective, VMs create a simple network. And the challenge there is one machine can be used as a staging ground to attack high value targets. So if you think of this, if I'm a hacker and I go and compromise 
uh, of uh, something basic, like an FTP server, uh, something that's a low priority target, and then use that as a staging ground to attack places where the real data lives, well, I've got all the time in the world because I've got a machine that's owned that I can use as that staging ground. Next, with VM theft, that's a little different. So VM theft, if you think of, of how things go with, with stealing data, you can either attack it from a perspective of, of using one of those staging grounds, such as another VM or the hypervisor, or you can steal the VM altogether. And the benefit there for the hacker is, now they have all the time in the world to break that virtual machine. They can spin it up and just run a full-fledged attack on it. And they don't have to be careful, they don't have to be cautious. It's very easy for them to just bang away on that door all day long. So, really at the end of the day, traditional security is what's most important. Segregate your network. Run your traffic through the IDSs and the IPSs. Run, run through ACLs. Segregate your virtual private, uh, your virtual network into different pieces. Make sure that the traditional route that people went with security for networks still applies. Uh, same thing for operating systems. Make sure your operating uh, operating systems are patched. Make sure that the software solutions that you're using on the customer side, what you're serving is also secured. These are all still relevant. But more than anything, secure your hypervisor. Make sure that access to the hypervisor console is done from another place. And if you have any tools that can segregate that out, I recommend it.